Hey. Hey, how's it going? If anybody's watching. 365 day devotional from Mexico's book con is with you every day. So, uh, it's for March 23rd. This is titled Forsaken. Uh, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, 46. Jesus' death on the cross is not a secondary theme in scripture. It is the core. The crucial accomplishment on, of Christ occurred on the cross. Lest we miss the message, God encased the climax of his story in, in high drama. The garden, Jesus crying out, the disciples running out, the soldiers bursting in. The trials were early morning mockery and deceit, juice scoffing, pilot washing. The soldiers weaving thorns, slashing whips, pounding nails. Jesus bloodied and beaten, more crimson than clean, every sinew of fire with pain. And God, he abonized the sky, ebonized the sky, and shook the earth. He cleaved the rocks and ripped the temple curtain. He untombed the entombed and unveiled the holy of holies. Oh, that's cool. Tore the veil. Ooh, we all have access to God now. That's crazy. Okay, very cool. But first he heard the cry of his son, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew twenty-seven forty-six. This was the moment in which God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong. Him that had no sin to become sin. <sighs> which is 2 Corinthians 5.21. God piled all of our sins, everything we've done wrong, on him. On him. He was beaten. He was tortured. But he didn't say a word. Isaiah 15. 53, 6 through 7. He was forsaken for you and me. Hmm. Kind of forget about that because it happened so long ago. So long ago, but it can be just like it was yesterday. Imagine if it was yesterday and that just happened. Would it have more an effect? It did happen. It did happen. You, you can read it just right in John three sixteen that it did happen. Somebody sacrificed their son so we could have life crazy if they never did that we wouldn't have life sorry not life like this it would really stink because we'd be controlled by satan and the god of the air and it would suck and it would be a struggle the whole time but we have access through the god through jesus christ because the veil has been torn we have access to the holies of holies back in the old testament before jesus christ only one super clean priest or priest could maybe make it in there, but he'll go th have to go through so many rituals, so many stages before he could just make it into the Holy of Holy. So many different rooms and uh, cleaning of himself. And I heard that they even, uh, did they put a, attach a rope to him? Maybe a rope with bells? Because uh, if it stopped moving, they know that um, he was in the presence of God and that's overwhelming. Maybe he died or something like that crazy stuff and now the veil has been totally torn and we have full access full access very cool so 365 day devotional matthew 27 46 uh, i probably wouldn't go there just yet i'd probably go second corinthians 5 21 Let's see how quick i can get there i've got the luke's and the john's and the romans and the and the Acts in the Romans. And right after Romans is our friends Corinthians 5.21. Let's see what that's all about. Our heavenly dwelling. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. 
Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Wow. Incredible. Dang, I'm not reading. 2 Corinthians 5. Cool. All right. Max Lucado's book, God is with you every day. Uh, love y'all. Friends, draw close to God first. His kingdom, of course. Uh, get a close relationship with your Heavenly Father. Love your God. Love your neighbor. Make some really good friends. Really good friends. Just talk to them. Talk to them about life. But if you constantly go through your same routines, whether it's getting off work and going straight home, or clocking right out and walking right out to the parking lot. Nothing ever amazing is going to happen again. So put yourself out there and break routines and be open for new opportunities. Uh, you know, you never know what God's doing in your life to work it out. You have to see that, see and be obedient that he wants you to do something. you got to do it. Just go, okay, use me, God, whatever, if that's what you want me to do. Uh, he'll put it on your heart and you'll be led and you'll be at peace with your decision. So just don't do things if you're not at peace with it. You totally have to be at peace. Like this is totally the right thing to do. Uh, like the, I always talk about relationships with people. You have to be at peace if you're going to ask that guy or girl out or ask them even engagement or uh, getting married or moving in together um, or making purchases. You have to be at peace with it. And to be be at peace with it. You have to definitely pray about it. Two-day rule. Two-day, big stuff. Two days, two weeks. Really big stuff. Two months. Just chill out and see what happens. Time goes by quite fast. I remember New Year's. What was I doing New Year's? It's April. Almost April. It's Easter. It's crazy. This time is very valuable to us. And what you do in this body, man. Use this body. Why we've got it, I mean, use it. Hmm. Use it to glorify God and His kingdom. You know, and experience life and all this stuff. Uh, there's so much to experience. So, go out there. You know, get out of the same routines that, you know, are exciting. They, they seem, but maybe it's all you know. But put yourself out there. Go and help somebody, serve somebody, or somebody less fortunate or somebody that doesn't get to get out there too much just uh hey you want to go do this or hey i want you to experience this with me because it's awesome people are have a lot of fear over new stuff but uh put yourself out there and do something new something exciting you know life is an adventure he wants you um to love it have excitement and uh mm, abundant re riches beyond all you can imagine and we ain't talking and don't always think money I mean that'll be there but it's kind of what runs the world in a way but what really runs the world is love absolute love huh yeah that's cool so have fun do something new do something new tomorrow hang out with moms and dads and uh and Mike, if you're watching, yeah, I meant to say, yeah. Hope your grandma, hope all, all that goes well. This uh, funeral that you guys get to say bye to her. Um, I don't know if that already happened, but uh, yeah, that you really just get to engage with family members more differently, deeper than you got to before. The last time I was with my grandma, me and my dad drove up to the hospital. Uh, she was okay. She was okay. She was sitting up. We... Uh, I sat there next to her bed and she talked about her life and everything she did in the Navy and who she worked for 
and how she grew up in Maryland and this and that and uh, uh, while she ate whatever she got from the hospital food which was crap so they kept bringing her sherbet because that was the only thing that tasted good uh, but uh, she was fine she was fine but the next day she went into uh, I don't know coma she pretty much died within two days but I got to spend time with her and talk to her. And she told me the things that were most important. And it was God. She definitely told me about that. And right outside her window, if we were laying here right on the bed, right on the window outside the hospital, were the flags. The American flag. Super important. To be a patriot. And patriotism. And to love your country. And your country is us. Just like the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. To love the body of Christ, your people, we are the church. We are the United States of America. We are the people. Government by the people, for the people. We are them. So, so we gotta um, run our house properly. And the only way to do that is off the Christian principles that our founding fathers uh, came up with, devised, because they were all Christ followers. And based off these principles, when you can't sway, you can't get away from those principles. Once you start to do that, uh, things don't work out too well. I know things have changed. I didn't maybe expect back then in 1775, 76-ish, when they were drawing it all up, that all this would happen. But if you stick, maybe because all this would happen because you haven't, you've swayed away from the Christian principles. But uh, my grandma told me all about that stuff. And she's the one that started me on my journey of searching for truth. And finally found it. You know? Yep. Yeah, finally found it. it was, it's amazing. So, cool deal. Cool deal. Mexicator's book. God is with you every day. Gotta believe that. I mean, uh, to have faith in something you don't see but you can feel and know that's there. It's God. God, you just know. No, God's got this. It's amazing. Hmm. Faith of a mustard seed. Crazy. Yeah. Good. Alright, this time I really go. Can action? And yeah, we'll go. 12 minutes 31. Amazing. Alright, guys. Love ya. Max Okita's book. God is with you every day. Matthew 27. On the cross. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Oh. He knew at that point, didn't he? He knew in the garden that, uh, yeah, when he prayed about it, and his dad still had the same decision that you got to follow through with this. He knew. Yeah, that's why. And after that happened, and went back up to heaven, and got resurrected. I think he, he understood. He already kind of knew, but he already kind of knew, but he still said that on the cross. I don't know, I'd have to study more about that, why he still said that on the cross. I'd have to study, first define forsaken, I guess. I don't know. Alright, I gotta roll. That's another day. Alright, see you guys. Love you.